Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of the Mickey Blog Podcast. And congratulations on to us on hitting 10,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, Mickey Blog just hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. Thank you for all of you who support us on that platform. And definitely go check yes. us out on there if you haven't yet. But anyways, Jesse, how are you doing? Good. It's a fun week. Um, I'm really excited to see a lot of Disney 100 stuff in Disneyland, so this will be super fun. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a good week. Can't complain. Yeah. How about you? You know, life is life is life, and it has been a fun <laughs> it has been a fun week. Uh, and obviously, Disney celebrating their massive 100 year celebration. So we will definitely be covering that on the blog yeah. and everything like that. So. Yeah, fun jazz. But anyways, before we jump into the topic and what today's podcast is all about, I do want to mention, as I always do, that Mickey Blog is sponsored solely by Mickey Travels, which is our partner travel agency. They are a diamond travel agency. But before, uh, you know, I get into all that, I'll get into a longer blurb about them later on. But anyways, (laughs) let's move on here because today we are introducing our third host to the podcast so congratulations to Kristen for joining Kristen. our absolute craziness. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. It's really great to be here. I'm excited to be part of this. I love you're gonna love it, and I love being a part of it. Yeah, it, we're we're very excited to have Kristen as our third host on the Mickey Blog podcast. I know for the last few weeks it's been. Jesse and I, sort of a dynamic yep. duo, but Jesse eventually messaged me and she said, look, if I have to keep hosting <laughs> shows with you and you alone, I am going to just quit. Jared? Like, I can't work here. Ugh. So, so we just yeah. fight too much. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, we argue <laughs> way too much right. about, you know, Jesse and <laughs> everything her wrong holiday opinions and all that fun what? stuff. We're not going to get okay. into it. Point is, Kristen is here we now. Should. And Kristen, please introduce yourself to our listeners who aren't aware of you and what you do here at Mickey Blog because you don't just host the podcast with us now. You have quite a few roles. So let everybody know who you are. Other fun stuff. So, yep, I'm Kristen. I have been coming to Disney Parks since 1984. Um, So the Disney River runs really deep. And I moved down to Orlando about two years ago. And I've been in the Disney blogosphere for, since I've been down here, about two years. And I started with Mickey Blog late last year. And since then, oh boy, I do do a lot. Um, (laughs) So I'm another one of the social media managers at Mickey Blog. And then I also report. So I'm in the parks several days a week. Mm -hmm. I love reporting. I get asked a lot, as I'm sure you guys do, you know, does it take the magic away? Do you get tired of it? And the answer is just no, no, I love it. And I could go in every day and just be happy. It just it didn't, the magic is not ruined. I love it. And I will always love it. And it's the perfect job for someone <laughs> who's been coming to Disney parks since 1984. Yeah. Um, so I love it. And I love the team that we work with at Mickey blog. And um, I just love being part of people's trips in some small way, right? Like the information we're giving them, they're using that for their trips or they're using that to decide how to spend their money on their trips. And I, I love that aspect of what we do. So Me too. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's so fun. And I can't think of a better, a better job, honestly. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I think, you know, for a lot of our listeners who listen to the podcast, obviously they come here to listen about the latest in Disney news or you want to hear some of our ridiculous opinions uh or you just you know you really feel like that jared guy he's entertaining i don't know why you're here but i will say that you know for a lot of our listeners who might not know what jesse kristen and i's like usual day-to-day job outside of helping with the social media channels we go to the parks three to five days a week and you know what jesse and i have talked about that a few times on the podcast but covering these parks full-time 
it, it is interesting because I've gotten that question before too, Chris, and I've, I've been asked like, hey, do you not enjoy Disney now? Like, are you still able to go separately and still have fun? And whenever I have family in town or friends in town, I can absolutely still go to Epcot and have an amazing yeah. time. I went to Animal Kingdom this past weekend with friends in town and, and had a wonderful time. It was their baby's first trip to Disney. So, of course, we're – She he was wearing – he was wearing a little Mike Wazowski onesie and we were just taking photos of him just everywhere. And I was I like, that sounds so cute. So I like, yeah. I was still having a blast, you know, like yeah. it, it just, if you love this stuff, if you love Disney, I mean, you can't think of a better job for us to do. Yeah. So, so Kristen, you got to tell our listeners though, you have a super fun fact and I want them to know about it. So I used to live in Los Angeles and I worked uh, for ABC TV on a little show called Extreme Makeover Home Edition back many, many, many years ago. And as part of that, yeah, no, the time, it just doesn't, no. But part of that was that I got to meet uh, some celebrities, but um, my ultimate celebrity goal was met at my time at Extreme Makeover Home Edition because I met the Muppets. I got to film... (laughs) With the real life Muppets, I've met Kermit the Frog. I have my picture with all the Muppets. I have a solo picture with me and Fozzie Bear. Um, Jared and Jesse can attest to it. I probably send it like in our group chats way too often as like a <laughs> humble brag. Whenever anybody talks about anything cool in their lives, I'm like, yeah, well, I met the Muppets. So that winner, I win. Um, tops it all. It tops it all. Um, so yeah, so. I've done really great things in my life. I, you know, I have a beautiful family and, you know, I have a great job, but yeah, the crowning achievement <laughs> this far that I like to talk about the most is that I've, I've met the Muppets and I got to hang out with them. Like I have like hangout stories with the Muppets. And that's, that's amazing. Really cool. Yeah. It's amazing. Kristen has, it's really cool. Kristen has two kids and she still is like, yeah, but I met the Muppets. But no, Frank, I will say this. Greatest accomplishment. I will, I will say this to our listeners too. Kristen being a part of this podcast is exciting because she is a mother and having that sort of opinion is valuable to a lot of our listeners because let's yeah. face it, many of Disney fans and people who travel to the Disney parks are part of families. They have kids. Our families. And, you know, it, I mean, there's not a lot of people out there like the Jessies and I's who just go as adults by themselves, you know, there are, I'm not saying they don't exist, there are. <laughs> but there's there also are. a large group of people who go as families, whether as adults, Absolutely. whether as parents or, you know, as kids or whatever. Yeah. So, so I just, I love having that added perspective. Um, and then other than that, all I would say is I could literally meet the president of the United States tomorrow and Kristen would be like, that's great. I met Kermit. So who cares? I met the Muppets. Yeah, yeah I just... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I kind of feel like the Muppets that, that wins. It's, it's, that really they're like most, way up there. <laughs> yeah, it board. really just trumps most celebrity encounters. Yeah, you know, and I will die on that hill. Honestly, yeah. I will. I totally, so, totally. I hear you. Um, let's move on. Uh, so (laughs) I'm just kidding. The the only reason I say this guys is if, if we start letting Kristen talk about the Muppets and her encounter, (laughs) then we're just, we're never going to get through this episode. So she does really love the Muppets. She brings it up once a week and we get it and we love her for it, but we're moving on. Uh, anyways, another fun fact of Kristen before we jump into our main topic of today is that you own how many pairs of Disney ears? I kind of thought you were going to bring that up. Okay, so wow, you <laughs> called her out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, welcome to the show. Right now. <laughs> Rude. Okay. So I own somewhere around two hundred and fifty pairs of ears. I lost count around like two fifteen, two twenty, and there's been a lot of additions since then. So I'm just kind of estimating. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then that's why this job is also perfect for me because you got like, I might not be in the park with the ears that just came out today, but one of you is. Yeah. I got, I got a pair for you literally in my bag. Just haven't seen it yet. I currently have a pair sitting next to me. Yeah. So that gives you guys, (laughs) our listeners, a general idea on where we stand with Kristen's ear addiction. It's uh, yeah. it's an ongoing issue, but we're here for her. And Can't we're believe here to her out. Look, yeah. I'm trying. No, to- it's fine. I own it. I mean, listen. Look, in this line of work, 
Yeah, it it's a fun fact. Not, yeah, people, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, I have like 12 pairs of ears. And I'm like, you're so cute, you know, because I remember when I also had 12 pairs of ears. <laughs> she <laughs> said, I just know. want you guys to know that she's going to kill me when this episode's over for bringing that up. <laughs> but I will say this. I just feel like that is an actual fun fact because a lot of Disney fans love Mickey and Minnie ears and they love collecting yeah. them and they love, you know, looking for the right ones. So having a you know, someone here who can not just talk about it, but like, hey, a new set of ears comes on and having Kristen on the show, we can describe them in detail literally in live time or show you in live time because odds are Kristen's going to have them. So, <laughs> yeah, fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to stop Very embarrassing cute. our new host now. Uh, <laughs> moving on, the main topic of this episode, now that you have gotten to know Kristen and you'll be getting to know Kristen on many, many, many more episodes to come because we drop new episodes every Friday, uh, we just want to dive into our topic for today. We wanted to sort of introduce Kristen, but also jump into a fun topic, an open-ended discussion oh, yeah. that I think a lot of our listeners are going to be interested in and want to hear about, and that is a full ranking of the Disney parks. So that is the domestic theme parks. That is does yeah. not include the uh, international theme parks, doesn't include, you know, uh, trust me. If anybody wants to go to uh, Disneyland Paris and Tokyo, Disney Sea, and all these amazing places, it's us. But we haven't been there. But the fun fact is, all three of us have been to all six of the domestic Disney theme parks. And we're going to rank them in order from our opinion, not saying it is worst to best, but our opinion worst to best. And we're probably going to debate a little bit. And then Kristen and Jesse okay. are going to fight each other and we're going to end the episode. <laughs> it's going to be great. So let's dive in. It'll be great. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start, obviously, six theme parks in total. And I also want to mention we're not doing water parks. So if anybody's curious about water parks or anything like that, we aren't doing water parks. And obviously, we love Disney Springs, but it's not a park. So it can be if you really just like Legos and eating cupcakes, because sometimes I go there for that. But anyways. Yeah, me too. Anyways, Jesse's starting. We're putting her on the spot. What, in your opinion, is the sixth ranked Disney park out of the four in Walt Disney World and the two in Disneyland? Okay, so I struggled with this. I really did because I love the parks for different reasons. And, for example, like, Dak is an amazing park and I love going there. But, like, compared to the rest of the parks, it doesn't line up when I was like doing rides and food and I was trying to take everything into account. So for me, my sixth one or my least favorite one would be um, Disney's California Adventure. Um, I know, Kristen's going to kill me. Did not see the look starting, face. starting off I hot for our people who can't see Kristen's face. Ooh, I know. She's upset, but just breathe. Wow. Okay. Anyway, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. <laughs> okay, the the only reason though, it was actually going to be like in the middle. The only reason it it was down at the bottom of my list was because I only went there twice within the same week. So I've only been there twice. Okay. Um, one of them was for the Halloween party, so it wasn't the same as like the normal daytime. Um, I didn't have like a full attachment to it. To me, I like that that memory and the nostalgia, the full attachment and going into a park. And for me, like when it comes to DCA, I didn't feel that when I walked in, it was very cool. It had its, you know, movie themed. It had different rides. Like I loved the Monsters Inc. ride. I thought that was one of the best rides there. I was like, this is so cool. I'm in Metropolis. What is happening? I was amazed. I thought it was so neat. Um, and then the, Kristen helped me, but the Cars ride. What's called? Radiator Springs Racers. Yeah. Thank you. That one Basically is amazing. Yeah. Is amazing. Way better than Test Track. But those were like the two main things I enjoyed. I really, I, I enjoyed the views. You know, the Ferris wheel is beautiful. Yeah. The water is pretty. Um, I saw the watercolor show. Color. Color. World of Color. Thank you. Watercolor. Yep. See, I told you it doesn't have an attachment to me. So I only, I was there once. It was fun, but it wasn't, like, way up there, like, I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. Like, I'm, you know, yes, like, I'll remember it was my first time there, but it it didn't call to me. I was like, um, Disneyland is right across. Can we go back there? <laughs> so, for me, comparing those two, 
it it really fell on the bottom of my list only because a lot of the Florida ones I do have more attachments with. Okay, well, uh, so. and Jesse's off the podcast. We are finding a new third host. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Wow, that's rude of you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, I I understand where you're coming from. Disagree, but yeah. I understand. Kristen, hit me with it. What's the dead last, in your opinion, ranked theme park out of the U.S. parks? All right, unpopular opinion, but mine was Magic Kingdom here in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but okay so my criteria is least <laughs> yeah like and bottom least. bottom of your list yes so here's i have different criteria first of all i'm connected to all six parks okay so when i used to live in california i went to disneyland and dca all the time i remember dca before they did their multi-million dollar renovation right. on it um so i got to see that park when it was really in rough shape and now what it is which is to me amazing um, and I, I love our Magic Kingdom and I am attached to it. Obviously, I've been coming here for decades and I bring my kids here and I love it. And there's a lot of magic here. I just feel like the rides that it has, for the most part, are all better in Disneyland. It's always very crowded. Not always. Mm, like nine times out of ten, it's pretty crowded. And when then again, I was at D- when I was at DCA for Halloween, it was more crowded than a normal Magic Kingdom day. I guess, but I mean, like Magic, I don't know. It's just like it. It has all of those things. It has the magic, and I would. I'm never turning down a chance to go to the Magic Kingdom. I just feel like the theming at other parks is better. The attention to detail in other parks is a little bit better. I mean. I love it, and I like I said, I'm not turning down a chance to go to Magic Kingdom. It's just not like the food there too. I there's not a lot of great. There's some great things, but I don't. It, I don't know. It's not. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite, and it is. But it's your point. sixth. I think what's important yes. to remember here, Jesse. What's important to remember here, Jesse, <laughs> is again one. As Kristen said earlier, we're all entitled to our own opinions. And two, I understand that. I didn't not, say her opinion was wrong. No, 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 no. Uh, just hear me out. <laughs> all I'm saying here is we're not saying, uh, like, when we're doing these rankings for our listeners to clarify, we're not, I, I don't think Kristen is saying, like, she hates Magic Kingdom or Magic Kingdom. No, I love no. it. It's just, I just hard. Think that it's hard to parts. rank these. Yeah. It's hard to rank it's these. It's very hard. And I think that there's other parks that do what the Magic Kingdom does a little bit better, is what I'm saying. Like, Pirates of the Caribbean in Walt Disney World is not as good as Disneyland. Space Mountain here is not as good as it is in Disneyland. Disneyland, Space Mountain here so much better. I don't, uh, full disclosure, I stopped writing Space Mountain many years ago, so maybe (laughs) I'm doing that wrong. But I just feel like the rides out in the sister park to our Magic Kingdom are better and their food options are better and it's themed better so i feel like when you're comparing and then when i start thinking about the part then okay so that's there when i start thinking about here it's kind of like i don't know but again i love it like i'm certainly not going to be like i'm never going to magic kingdom and if i get hate mail fine but i just i feel like other parks do what the magic kingdom does a little bit better yeah so now that Kristen said all that, I agree. Magic Kingdom is my sixth ranked theme park. Uh, out wow, of, you guys. Out you of, guys can both go home. I'll run the podcast <laughs> myself. It's fine. Look, okay, I, I'm i the same, a lot of the same that Kristen was talking about. Like, I love a lot that the Magic Kingdom does, but after visiting Disneyland, I just personally think it's a worse version of Disneyland Park, and... The way the layout is is far more spread out, which feels not as authentic, and it doesn't feel as, you know, filled with love Arming. and care and charming as Magic Kingdom or sorry as Disneyland Park does. I think the railroad is better out there. I think having the pirate ship is better out there. I think, obviously, the rides like I think there's certain stuff that I like. In Magic Kingdom more, like the monorail in Magic Kingdom. I we like have a more. people mover, they don't. Yeah, we you have know? a people yeah. mover, they don't out there. Uh, obviously, I'm a little biased because I was in Tomorrowland when Hyperspace Mountain was going on. So 
when I was in Disneyland, I got to ride Hyperspace Mountain. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's where they basically sort of wrap the ride in a Star Wars theme for a while. And I'm a massive Star Wars fan. So obviously I found that amazing. Like, you know, so, so it's not that I dislike the Magic Kingdom in any way. I just found Disneyland far better. And when I think about the rest of these parks, when I'm thinking about what I love and, and don't love or like or dislike, I like the other elements of these other parks more than I like the elements of the Magic Kingdom. That's probably the best way yeah. I can sum it up. So We just can't be friends anymore. I have the Magic Kingdom castle tattooed on my leg. So. <laughs> and I love your tattoo and I love the Magic Kingdom, but like Jared, I agree. I agree with Jared. Yeah. I just think that the elements of the Magic Kingdom are done better elsewhere. Yeah, it is it is what it is. Jesse, we still love you. Anyways, uh, moving on. I don't, I don't know how I feel about you anymore. So. <laughs> let's, let's move on to number five. Jesse, who you got as your number five ranked park? Uh, I got to pull up my US list. Parks? Okay. My number five is DAC. I say it's DAC. It's Disney's Animal Kingdom. Only because, I know, I'm sorry. I love going there. I love reporting there. Um, it is my favorite park to report in because it's beautiful. You walk around. It's really relaxing. Um, but for me, like I'm, I love their shows also, but I'm a parade person. I want to see a castle or a, a big element and where like with animal kingdom, you have the tree and it's beautiful and I love nature, but it's not a park that I'm like, Oh, Everest is based off of Mickey mouse because it's, it's not, it's a Yeti, which is amazing. Betty the Yeti is fantastic, but it's, it doesn't scream as Disney to me. Um, it's more of a zoo with a couple rides in it. Um, and I like zoos, but okay, everything's fine. I know. Sorry, Jared. Everybody's <laughs> entitled to their own opinion, as flawed as it might be. <laughs> Apparently, I'm, I'm the flawed one today. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, and I, I, I can understand. Again, I don't yeah. agree, but I can understand how you're viewing that. Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand why you are trying to on purpose make me mad with your list. Like I fully <laughs> get it. Like you're sitting there and you're like, how can I make this as opposite as Jared's? I get it. Yeah. I get it. I guess. I mean, it was really hard. Like I did some shower thinking and then I <laughs> rethought for like two weeks later and I was like, I need to like write out my list and really think about it. And I changed things like a couple of times and I was like no, I'm going to switch these. No, wait, mm-hmm. I'm going to switch these. No, wait, I'm going to switch these. Because it really is so hard because it's, yeah, I, I love like them that. all for different reasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, It's hard. It is. And I totally get that. And and yeah. uh, one thing I will quickly mention, by the way, before we get to Kristen's uh, next uh, pick, you know, I think Magic Kingdom getting Tron is a massive deal. And I think once oh, yeah. Tron comes out and I go on Tron, Magic Kingdom could easily jump up a, even a few spots in these rankings. That's how big of a deal this ride is. And the reason I say that is because you? to me, I just think Magic Kingdom is like lacking exactly that. Like having a big yeah. real ride of that caliber, having a like top tier list, like attraction of that caliber is exactly what that park needs. So just yeah. want to throw that out there for anybody who likes Magic Kingdom and now doesn't like me. Anyways. It's okay. I'm going to defend it later. Don't worry. Okay. Kristen, you're up. It's okay. I got you. What's your fifth ranked uh, park out of the six Disney parks? Okay. So my fifth rank, ranked park would be Hollywood Studios. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is because I think it is struggling to find its identity. Because when it first opened as Disney MGM Studios back in 1989, it was like, you're a look inside the movies and you had the backlot tour and you had like a lot of, you know, you had the, this was even before Tower of Terror was there. Like you had that, I'm tripping on my words, but you had like, it was, you know, the Honey, I Shrunk the Audience playground and you were going inside the movies and, um, you know, that they had that monster sound stage show. I can't remember the name of it, but you know, and obviously the great movie ride and all of that stuff that you were going in the movies. And it was a park that knew its mission and what it was doing. Mm -hmm. And they've come very far from that, but there's still elements of that. And it, I feel like it just is struggling to 
find its identity, like I said. So you have Toy Story Land, and then you have Star Wars Land, which are beautiful. I mean, especially Galaxy's Edge is, is as, I'm not a Star Wars person, but I can appreciate that for what it is. And my son loves, he's five, he loves Star Wars. So when he sees the Millennium Falcon, you know, he lights up and I can appreciate it. And Toy Story Land is so cute and so thought out. I, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get everything that we were supposed to get with that. I think there's a lot of room for growth there. But I just feel like as a whole, it's not this like you're stepping inside the movies anymore. It's kind of a little bit of a mishmash of what they don't know where to put where and then Hollywood Studios gets it. And then to me, it feels very disjointed now. Um, So that's why I kind of put it at that level. There's beautiful elements of it. My personal favorite is Echo Lake because that has remained pretty much unchanged (laughs) since the old days. And I love Gertie and I love you know, the hidden Roger Rabbit detail in the window. And I love that stuff. And it's just, it's just lost some of that, I think. So, yeah. Uh, so Jesse, I swear, uh, Kristen and I didn't plan for this, but yeah, uh, that's also my <laughs> fifth option. Um, and so full disclosure, I love, I love Hollywood studios. And, and as you know, both Kristen and Jesse know, I'm a massive star Wars fan and you know, anybody who knows me knows that I love star Wars. So it, it's tough to put it this low, but like I'm kind of agreeing with Kristen in the sense where I do feel like it's lost its identity. And and it was funny. I was doing a live stream on the Mickey Blog Facebook page the other day. I was walking around Hollywood Studios and we got a bunch of different questions and comments and everything. I'm not that popular, guys, but I'm just saying it. And we had somebody ask, uh, you know, what's your favorite part of Hollywood Studios? And I told them that it was Sunset Boulevard and not Galaxy's Edge, because I like being over there because I still feel it has that vintage MGM Studios feel to it. When I walk down there and I walk towards the Tower of Terror and I see like that's where the street performers used to perform and I see Legends of Hollywood and you know that feels very vintage Hollywood-esque and Legends of Hollywood at nighttime just reminds me of like 50s Hollywood almost and so that's the side of the park I actually enjoy the most and same with I I love Echo Lake mostly during Christmas time but I still like Echo Lake but either way like as much as I love Star Wars there had to have been a better way to implement Star Wars without Hollywood Studios losing that section of the park that gave it so much of its identity I mean that whole section of the park beyond losing Osborne Spectacle of Lights, which in my opinion was a travesty, but like that section of the park was walking onto a Hollywood set. I mean, that's what it was about. And you had the backlot tour back there. I mean, I feel like, and now Mm -hmm. don't get me, I've told, I've told Chris and Jesse, don't let me talk about the great movie ride on this podcast because I'll start getting angry. But like they took the movie ride out of the park about movies. I just don't get it. I don't understand. I don't get it. It's the centerpiece of the park in the Chinese theater, and it's a ride about the history of films. And they were like, let's take it out of the park about movies. That that is like, I I don't even know. I don't get it. I don't know what to say about that. It's It's like taking like Cinderella's castle out of the Magic Kingdom. I don't understand. I, like, I, it doesn't make sense I don't get to it me. either. So I'll never understand that. But again, I'll get into that in a different episode. Point is, Hollywood Studios, it's a great park. And, and there's enough that I like about it that I put it over Magic Kingdom. But I just can't sit here and really put it above any of the four. I have it above it. It's just, yeah. I just can't do it. But we're going to get into our top four. But before we do, as I always do in this episode, podcast or on this podcast gosh i can't talk today is mention our sponsor as i mentioned at the beginning of the episode every single episode of the mickey blog podcast is sponsored by mickey travels and mickey travels is a nationally recognized leader in disney vacation planning so if you need a disney vacation planner or travel agent you're going to want to listen to this Um, they are a diamond earmarked agency by disney and their services are 100 percent free I want to emphasize that because so many of our listeners and people who learn about Mickey Travels don't think that's real. But no, they are 100% free. You booking your own Disney trip costs exactly the same as going through a Mickey Travels agent. They can book it all for you. They can plan your whole trip, book it all for you, and basically be your right-hand man or woman or just just in general, your friend, your Disney friend who plans it all for you. 
And uh, so just reach out to Mickey Travels today for a free quote on your Disney vacation at MickeyTravels.com. That's MickeyTravels.com, making magic one vacation at a time. But let's jump into our fourth park on our list. Jesse, you're up. I want to hear it. Uh, please don't break my heart, but I want to hear it. Go ahead. It's not going to break your heart. I'm just going to keep talking about Hollywood Studios. Cool. We're, we're so on the same page then. It's fourth on my list. Um, same reason, though. It, it lost its identity. So I yeah. loved it when it was MGM. You could go into the movies. Great movie ride. was heartbreaking. Luckily, I was able to go on last week, and I was like, thank God. I know. Sorry, Chris. Um, but no, it was... I was checking it down here. It was... Yeah. I know, but yeah, no, it's, I mean, Tower of Terror is my favorite ride of all of the theme parks, and it's really low on my list on parks just because of that, like, Sunset Boulevard is amazing, Echo Lake is amazing, but it just, I'm not a Star Wars fan, I don't really go to that section of the park anymore, I love Toy Story, but I think they could have made it bigger, it's very small, you walk through it, and then you're like, oh. There's also yeah, zero shade, you're just hot. Yeah, yeah. so hot. Yeah. So yeah. hot. I think there's like, a lot of missed opportunities in Toy Story Land. Yeah. You know, and then to get to the gift shop, it. you have to like walk through the line queue yeah. to like find Toy Story things. Like it. Yeah. They don't I sell love Toy it. toys I, in Toy Story Land that much. Like, like you said, you have to go through the queue to see it. You, you have to like, and if you don't know that, like, queue, you're you like, wouldn't even know it was there. Toy. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Like you have to like um, walk through the back of the queue to like find a decent store. Yeah. So just, I mean, I'm really excited excited for the new barbecue restaurant. That'll be really cool. Um, the food looks amazing, but I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it is one of my favorite places to eat. They do have a lot of options, um, but it just didn't, I couldn't compare it to anything else on my list. Yeah, I hear yeah. that. And honestly, another thing too that I wanted to, to mention, I'm sorry I keep stealing Kristen's time. Uh, I, just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention that I think Hollywood Studios could have been higher up the rankings for me too had they done Toy Story Land and Star Wars Land better. And a lot of people love yeah. Galaxy's Edge, and I'm not going to sit here and say Galaxy's it's Edge beautiful. is poorly done. But I have my gripes with it, frankly, and I think they could have done a better job with even Galaxy's Edge, not just Toy Story Land. I think having that that land take place during only the sequel trilogy, for example, only the newer movies, was a horrible, horrible mistake because... I think that whole land could have been a lot better if it was a full celebration of all the Star Wars films. And you could have had Luke Skywalker walking around or Han Solo yeah. or anything like that. And I think that could have been really cool. But anyways. I don't know Ewoks. anything about Star Wars, but I think it would have been cooler to have like one version of or like Batu in Disney World and then some another planet in mm -hmm. Disneyland and then the two like it's just I like when I went to the one in Disneyland I was like wow this is literally like it's it's weird isn't it copy it's paste. like it's like you just teleport into Hollywood Studios yeah I just felt <laughs> like I was home and I was like okay I don't mm, what am I and now like a lot of the food options yeah. are the same like the originally there was a little bit of difference and now it's pretty much a carbon copy so I think again another missed opportunity mm. to have like a really unique experience in each so yeah i hear you yeah but i walked when i walked into the disneyland one i was like oh a water fountain oh a bathroom oh my god i know where i can pee here I I because <laughs> it was the same mm -hmm. thing it was so weird i was like am i where yeah. where am i which is yeah. unlike, like deja vu. which is so unlike disneyland because almost yeah. everything else is totally different so exactly. yeah but yeah what's it was so, weird what is was your a, uh fourth economical choice yeah um, okay, so my fourth is Animal Kingdom. Um, I, again, I love Animal Kingdom. I'm constantly surprised that Pandora, like, made me care about a franchise that I don't really care about. Because mm -hmm. um, I've never seen Avatar. I did not see the sequel. I shouldn't say I've never seen Avatar. I saw, like, the TV version of it. Oh, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. That doesn't count. You don't see it. Yeah, it, you know, you know. Um, I did not see the sequel, but I do like going to Pandora. Like I like the food options they have there. I, you know, I like flight of passage. It's not a must ride for me, but I think it's beautifully done. I do like that land made me care about this franchise. Whereas normally I, I don't care. Um, I think I, you know, I, I love the original attractions of it. I think now we see a lot of attractions based on Disney IPs and that was kind of the last 
bastion of original ideas with Expedition Everest and some of that. So I love that aspect of it. Um, it's just not, there's just other parks I'd rather go to, honestly, sometimes. I mean, but I love Animal Kingdom. It's my daughter's favorite. So we always go and look at the animals and I think their food choices are great. And they always have like really great cupcakes that are original and fun. And, you know, it's a great place. It's more relaxing. It's a nice vibe there. Whereas again, like Magic Kingdom yeah. is a little bit busy and it's a lot. And, mm-hmm. you know, but again, the rides there are, yeah. the shows right. are. Yeah. I mean, I could hang out in Dinosaur all day. Yeah. Like Dino Land is fabulous, but it's you know. cute. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. but again, like Dinosaur, its counterpart, Indiana Jones on the West Coast is so much better. So every time I ride that, I'm kind of like, no, I know you're, you're disagreeing with me, but I mean, no, <laughs> I, Dinosaur I, is so much better. Okay. Couldn't disagree more, okay. Jesse. Could no, not disagree fine. more. So, but anytime <laughs> I ride Dinosaur, I'm like, eh, Indiana Jones is better. Like, I kind of go, meh, you know, so yeah. it's, it's beautiful and I love it. And I think it's beautifully themed better than probably almost any other park, but it's just, it's number four. Yeah. I, I hear that. Um, to be honest, my final four here, like are almost interchangeable, um, for different reasons. I'm not going to say like, I mean, I do think my number one stands apart. Uh, but I think two, three and four are very much so interchangeable. And frankly, I was I have my pen and I have notes right here on my notebook where I I did a flip flop little symbol in between three and four where I thought about like should I like should I switch Same. those like seconds before I talk about it that's how hard this list is and I'm sure if we asked a bunch of our listeners or or readers or anybody who's been to the six Disney parks they'd also have a difficult time but my number it's four hard. is California Adventure um, and the reason I have it ranked at number four is you know, I really, really love California Adventure, to be honest with you. And a lot of the parts of it that I found myself loving were the parts that people don't appreciate enough. And that's like, you know, like the Northern California section with like the Redwoods and all that. And, yeah. you know, like that water ride. I really love that water ride over there. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it. Um, but Grizzly River yeah, Grizzly River I one, because Grizzly. I grew up, you know, I was born on the West Coast and I grew up going out to California a lot. And I just felt like that was like how I want DHS to be, California Adventure. Mm. It's like, it's so yeah. well themed. Yes. And I almost think it's losing a little bit of its luster and its theme from the Avengers stuff and the uh, Pixar Pier stuff d- that's similar to the idea of uh, Hollywood Studios. But the difference there is, is obviously you're still in like California So LA and Avengers Tower and and Avengers stuff and Avengers Campus, like it still kind of makes sense to be there. And Pixar Pier, I mean, Pixar's studios is in California. Like it still makes more sense to be there. Like I found myself walking around that park being so entranced by the theming and the California, just the way they set up the California sections. Like Jesse, I love the Monsters, Inc., Um, ride. I thought that was very well done. I loved Avengers Campus. I thought the food was underrated over there. Pixar Pier was fantastic. And frankly, I think Cars Land has an argument for being the best theme park land Mm -hmm. on the planet. Uh, So, and going at nighttime there like blew me away. I had the best churro of my entire life in Cars Land. Mm -hmm. There's this cookie butter churro out there and it's just covered in like, like, oreo cookie dust and they give you like cookie dough dipping cream and i literally ordered it like four times in the three days and they have the macaroni and cheese cones there too oh my god don't get me started on the mac and show cheese cones i mean the food is just so much better in disneyland but that's a different topic point is is that while i was there i found myself and then radiator springs racers like there's so much good going for california adventure there really is so it was hard for me to put the few that I did put above it because there's and there's reasonings behind it but I was I went to Disneyland for the first time last year and I was honestly shocked doing my rankings that I put two Walt Disney World parks in the top three because 
frankly, I loved it. I loved every second of Disneyland, and I totally understand the hype. I totally get it. My wife talks about that trip on a weekly basis. I'm dead serious. Like, it was amazing, and the, the, I just can't say enough good things about Disneyland. But let's move on before I start rambling too much. But anyways, <laughs> we're down to the nitty-gritty now, uh, guys. We're yes. down to our top three. Getting real. So I'm very top curious three. to hear uh, what is your third, Jesse. Start us off. My third's Epcot. Okay. So Epcot, only because of the festivals, it really, it it, it ranked a lot higher than it should have for me because of the festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, with Epcot, it is kind of also going through an identity crisis. Um, it's Great. trying to find its way. I I worked there for two years, and it me it being my home park, it doesn't mean as much to me as it used to only because I got burnt out working there. Um, but it also being my home park, it has different memories for me. So that side was completely different. But then again, with the festivals, I am obsessed with the festivals and they have recently been like, Oh, festival, 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 festival. And I'm like, Ooh, a new festival or Ooh, another festival or, Oh wow. This one's longer. This one has new food. And they're exciting and they're fun. So really, that's what won Epcot over for me. Country-wise, drinking around the world. Like, for me, that's not really my thing. I don't drink around the world. The countries are cool, but I'll be like, yay, I'll see you in Italy. And they'll be like, Italy? I'm like, yeah, in Epcot. Like, okay. (laughs) Like, I don't really, really care about the countries. It's not really my thing. Um, I love Figment, but... He needs more. I, what, what, Jared? What was what? that, Jared? I, I just, <laughs> what? I'm just letting out a sigh about not caring about the countries or drinking around the world because that's like a part of my identity. Oh, okay, because I, I thought I, you were disparaging. Is, is that, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah that, that's what the sigh was. I, I, continue, mm, sorry. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Wow, just checking. <laughs> so, yeah, Figment, you know, needs more in the yes, park. I um, agree. He's getting more, which is fantastic. Um, I love that they made the whole new festival about him, and it's amazing, and I will buy all of the merchandise with his face on it. Fig- That's fine. Figment kind of sucks, guys. Figment kind of sucks. There I said it. Jared, <laughs> do not come for Figment, okay? I didn't see no, that is her favorite character. I didn't see the original Figment, Chris, and I don't know that's what that's your like. Problem. So the only I to ride through. All I have. I'm going to need you to YouTube the original ride, <laughs> and then get back to me. The okay? only yes. thing I have to base it off of is the current ride, Epcot which baby. isn't that good. Let's just say it how it is. The current no, the ride is, is not, not good. good. I agree with you. I agree I like with it. you. The ride is not good. So, but I ride it. Compared to the compared to the old one i don't even want fine, to ride it anymore. but like i i like it i just don't it enjoy it the only reason i go over there is to see Pooh bear catching butterflies it's the only reason i go to that side yes. of the park anyways kristen sorry i, mean, I just fired up kristen so bad with he's comments. very very cute catching butterflies but you know <laughs> i need to like take a minute and come and, back yeah i need i need a minute to recoup from jared's statement because it, it was, that was a lot rude. for this 80s Epcot baby to handle. Okay. It Oof. was a lot. Um, yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Hard time. Well then. Yeah. Well on then. to the next one. <laughs> yeah. What's your third, uh, Kristen? Um, so my second and my third, I had a hard time. So um, my third, I also did Epcot. Um, and wow. for different reasons from Jesse. So as I mentioned, <laughs> I was born around the same time that Epcot opened. So I grew up with it. So I have this weird affinity for it because I feel like all of its milestones in life are kind of also mine. And um, I remember, yeah, and I remember so much of the old Epcot. Um, I remember the spacesuits with the rainbows that they wore and I remember the original Journey into Imagination ride, and I remember Magic Journeys, and all of this amazing history. And it's very difficult for me that it has changed so much in such a short period of time. Um, I miss the Fountain of Nations. I miss the old mouse gear. I love that really cartoony look to it, and now I feel like Creations is just kind of like this department store that has no character. Um, like a Macy's. As bad as the food at Electric Umbrella was, it was so kitschy and obnoxious, and it 
I just missed it. And now Connections is, I don't know, it's just like a Starbucks. It's like a cafeteria. Am I in a commissary? Am I in an office building? Like, where am I? And it's losing some of that original stuff for me. And I, like I said, I love Epcot. It will always be my favorite park here. I will, I, you know, I went to Epcot on my birthday. Any chance I get to go to Epcot, I'm going to take. And I think that's where I have most of my memory. So it's, it's a nostalgia thing for me. And it's just, it's losing some of that. And I really do like what they did with the Figment's Imagination Station for Festival of the Arts, how they're bringing some that's of perfect. like, you know, the old murals back in and the pin tables. And I mean, Jesse was, was with me when we were there and I was emotional in there because it just, it came you know, my kids won't get to experience the Epcot that I got to experience. And that makes me kind of sad, but yeah. this was kind of as close as I'm going to get. And so it, it made me a little bit emotional. And another fun fact about me is I danced on stage at the Odyssey with characters back in the eighties when they used to have a little show there when it was a food service restaurant. So yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Well, so, I, my claim to fame. I uh, totally get a lot of what you were talking about. I mean, I don't, so here's the here's the issue. I don't though in some cases because I'm I'm just turned 27 and, and the Kristen was right about how she like grew up with it in the sense where like you turn 40 the same year that Epcot turned 40. I mean like that's yeah. that's incredible. Like and obviously like you have that personal connection to it. I don't have a lot of memories of like the OG OG Epcot. I do though about some of it like i loved walking around and seeing the ground light up and i loved i i loved the look of the electric umbrella and the old coca-cola and where the old starbucks was and where that fountain was like i do like a lot of that stuff but i actually like a lot of the directions that epcot's currently going more than the popular that it's an unpopular opinion more than the average person does so that's not my third choice my third choice is animal kingdom And frankly, I think it's criminal that you guys had it as low as you did. But that's just me. (laughs) Now, here's the thing that I want to harp on for a second. Both you guys were talking about, you both mentioned this idea that like Animal Kingdom doesn't have as much like Disney magic as maybe these other parks do. And I just like could not fundamentally disagree with that as much as I do. One, Walt was a big lover of animals. Two, Joe Rohde, who is incredible, designed this park. And- I mean, we talk a lot of already about parks losing its identity. This is probably the only park that still has its full-blown, original. consistent, original identity. And one of the only parks in theme park history where they added a massive land expansion and it still continued to have that exact same identity. It didn't even lose it a little bit. Like some people think Avengers Campus makes California Adventure lose a little bit of that identity regardless of how you feel about it. Animal Kingdom yeah. didn't lose a single bit of its identity with Pandora. In fact, it just became even cooler. Um, so for me, I I do love animals a lot. I'm not like a, you know, one of those people who just like, you know, has 14 cats. Uh, no offense, Jesse. But I just think... I have two. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I I just find it really incredible. And, and I again, I went this past weekend with some friends in town because my... My friend had never done Disney outside of like drinking around the world for a few hours with his buddies. And and I wanted to show him something that was very cool to him Disney. and intrinsically Disney. And we landed on Animal Kingdom. We didn't even do Magic Kingdom or one of these other ones. And he thought it was incredible. And I just, for me, when I walk into that park, I'm just completely blown away by its theming. I, I'm From the very beginning, I mean, Asia is incredibly well done. Africa is incredibly well done. I think... It has original attractions that other parks just don't have to that same capacity. For example, Expedition Everest is one of the most well-done original attractions in Disney history. I mean, Flight of Passage is a top five Disney ride in general, I think, for most people around the globe. I can't watch it. And I'm sorry, (laughs) Jesse gets dizzy. Uh, I do, I get sick. (laughs) But I just, every time I go there, I get more and more i think i like it more and more and i think a lot of it has to do with how many different amazing animals they have there too that you really can't find unless you go to africa like when you go on the african safari in disney i dare you to find a better well done safari outside of literally going to africa like you're not going to find it it's something that is incredibly unique to right there and frankly every other park at disney outside of 
maybe the two ahead like doesn't have a whole lot of that like there there's a lot of stuff you can find in Hollywood studios that you can find in Universal Studios or, or any other theme park but there's stuff in Animal Kingdom you cannot find anywhere else and so when Jesse called it like a zoo I almost left this podcast like I just well it is a zoo it's no it is so much more than a zoo <laughs> It, Remember the old advertising before it was that it's not a zoo. Yeah, not uh, a zoo. I get, I get. Yes, I've been to a zoo. I get why people feel that about it a zoo, and I get why people even call it a half day park. Actually, I don't understand that. But people, yeah, who, that I don't understand because there's but animal trails you can walk on. There's so many different parts of that park you can walk around. Discovery Trail, yeah. like the Tree of Life Trail, yeah. which I think is one of the most underrated spots in all of Walt Disney World. Uh, I know I just gave it away, but it is. But regardless, like, just there's a lot to love about that park. And also, it's my mom's favorite park. And honestly, I love my mom. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's my, I hope she listens that's to this my, episode. That's my one little softy Jared moment. Anyways, we're moving on. Softy Jared. Jesse, what is your number two? Number two is Disneyland. So Disneyland <laughs> is amazing. I did go there for the first time last year. It was so original. It was it was just, it was just so classic, and it was, it was very small. I wish it was bigger, which is why it's my number two. Um, Kristen's face right now. You guys need to go watch the YouTube because our face our, expressions are yeah, they're pretty good. They're amazing. Yeah, um, yeah so Disneyland, fun. I. <laughs> That's what I was giggling. I, I giggled when you said I Disneyland know. because I saw Kristen's face and it almost looked to me like a part of her soul left her body i know which is just inherently it's my funny. number two though that's yeah, that's, I mean, she that's good it. honestly she ranked it higher than i thought she was gonna rank it because jesse Thank and i are you. very good friends and we've had a lot of discussions about this so i am shocked that this was your number two thank you i appreciate that so yes it's my number two it is it's very classic it's very um detailed it's you walk in and I was like I walked in and I was like oh my god this is amazing this is so cool it is the original so you're like wow Walt stood here just having all those memories kind of like they're not my memories but you know that they're there Mm -hmm. and you just kind of take all of that in which was so cool I was there during Halloween time and the decorations the characters the characters are out and it was just amazing to just even walk down Main Street and be like oh my god all the stores are more detailed. All the rides are yeah. super tiny. These little tiny cues. I'm like, how do people fit into these? Mm-hmm. They're so small. You like wiggle through them. Um, the rides are very classic, very original. The Alice in Wonderland was probably my favorite um, with Haunted Mansion. It was themed and it was amazing. I need to go back when it's not themed. Um, but it was it was so different than what I was expecting because I did have more emotion and it was more special than I was expecting it to be. So it did rank pretty high on my list. But again, like I didn't grow up going to Disneyland. That was my first time there. So without those like childhood memory aspects of it, I had to rank it number two because my number one, I have memories at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, it did fall again. I struggled with this whole dang list. This whole <laughs> list was super duper hard, but um, yeah, no, I really did enjoy Disneyland. Um, I will fight with you on the food though, because when we went there, the food was just, it was all right. It wasn't that great. The churros were amazing, but I'm Jared. <laughs> I don't know. We, we went there. It was, it was just, it was the start of the Halloween party and it was just really busy. Yeah. Like yeah, I'm, I was not expecting it to be that busy. And I was like, we're in the middle of September. Why is it so busy? So I really think that did affect some of my trip um, with that little aspect of it. But there was also no fireworks, which I was really sad about. Mm. They had just taken the fireworks away. They had just taken the parade away. So I it was, was there. Parade, which is, I freaking missed the parade by a week. And I was so upset because I really wanted to see the electrical parade on Main Street in Disneyland and I didn't get to see it. So I was already angry about that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They took away the forever fireworks. I didn't get to see those. I was super excited and super happy about the Halloween fireworks though, because they only do them on weekends, which I was like, what? Only weekends? What, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. 
So I wasn't planning on going on a weekend. I don't go to Disney World on a weekend. Why am I going to go to Disneyland on a weekend? That's people, no, that, does, that doesn't sound fun. Mm. So a cast member was like, hey, we actually do have fireworks on Saturday night. And I was like, oh, so I need to buy another ticket to come back on a Saturday. Good to know. So I did end up having to go, having to go again. Yeah. I was had to go again so yes yeah, so we did end up going on a saturday to see the fireworks which is very similar to our old halloween fireworks which i was crying about i was watching it in tears and i was like happy hollow wishes and, like tears rolling down my face my fiance looking at me like what is wrong with you but i really did love it it was amazing um so yes it's my my top two all right cool well, that, yeah. that was a solid argument, and I feel like Kristen's will yeah. still hang out with you now after all that. So, I will. See? Kristen. No friends are lost, so. honestly. Yeah, so <laughs> let's hear your number two, Kristen. Uh, my number two would be Disney's California Adventure. Uh, it is everything that I wish Hollywood Studios would be. I yeah. think visually it's absolutely beautiful. Um, the Ferris wheel... Um, you know, the, and then the backdrop of the Incredicoaster in the back. Um, I think World of Color is what they actually should have done in Epcot instead of Harmonious. I think that style of show would actually be very popular out here. And I love that show. I think their food is great. I, you know, even like the re-theme of uh, Paradise Pier 2, Pixar Pier, I think was done very well. Uh, I know the locals don't love Avengers Campus, and I can see why, but I also have two kids that love Spider-Man. So for me, that was awesome that they, you know, they really love that stuff. So as a mom, that was really cool to, you know, actually, you know, be able to do web slingers and, you know, uh, the technology there was so cool. And again, I remember what it was because I used to live in California. I remember what it was before they did this whole, you know, revamp of it. So to see what it was and what it has become is absolutely awesome. And then you also get, you know, you have Oswald out there as a meet and greet. You have, you know, I don't know. It's just, it. like I said, it's everything that I wish Hollywood Studios was. And I do think, again, there is a little bit of an identity crisis there, a smidge, but not on the level that we have out here with Hollywood Studios. So yeah. it's like more easy for me to forgive that than it is here because I see it here, which is like glaring. And in there, it's just, and I'm excited for the San Francisco layover in their uh, wharf area. I think that's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, when they bring in Baymax, that's going to climb like way up on my yeah, list. Yeah, it's going to shoot way up the list. But yeah, oh, I yeah. just... Just don't get rid of the sourdough it. bread bowls. That's but Just don't get rid of them, okay? Keep them Yeah, I do. I do. But that's we what I... Bread. I yeah, bread. But like Jared was saying, there's just so many little like nooks and crannies there that are like just so relaxing and just so beautiful. And I mm. also really enjoy, and this is just overarching, the hotel that butts up against there. I've been lucky enough to stay at the Grand Californian a few times, and I love its proximity to that park and how you can walk right in. And just the walkability in general of the West Coast parks is just, it again, as a mom with a stroller, it's just, you can't beat that, you know, you can Unless just- Unless you have to fold it for the monorail. Yeah, this is true. We yeah. were talking about this the other, you know, we saw footage of the 100 year monorail wrap before, and I love the Disneyland monorail, but you have to fold up your stroller in the Disneyland yeah. monorail. And again, as a mom <laughs> of two kids and an eight year old that still wants to be in the stroller, it's it's a tough sell to tell me I got to fold up my monorail. It my, is. Yeah, it's a tough my stroller. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I totally get. It. In fact, a lot of what Kristen was just talking about with California Adventure has me already rethinking my list. Just just oh, me just too. because like I almost forgot about like the whole San Francisco section, and I know they're retheming it to you know Big Hero Six, but like I love that section of the park. I mean, I grew up going to San Francisco, and so you know eating a real sourdough bread bowl was amazing, and seeing Mickey loaves of bread shaped you know in sourdough like yes, that was amazing and you know uh but beyond that like the little bridge right there there's so many little ducks that swim around in that area it's really gorgeous and then you know the transition over to cars land and even that little winery over there is really cool yep. like there's there's so much about that park that is so gorgeous and, and their festivals 
the DCA festivals too. I mean, you have the Lunar New Year one going on right now. Like they're just, you know, you see, and again, we have wonderful festivals here, but you see the footage of those and, you know, the, the merchandise that they get, like they get everything before us, they get more than us. And then you have these festivals, the food is absolutely amazing, you know, and so unique and so different and for so many more palettes and, Mm -hmm. you know, it just leaves me wanting more of that on this. I need another trip there. Yeah. Yeah. No, agreed. Yeah, I different think, season. I think what we've come to terms with is as much as we get to go to Walt Disney World, we all clearly need to just go out to Disneyland too. Um, it's we just, just so much we, harder to get We there. don't get to go to Disney enough, guys. It's ridiculous. All right. Uh, <laughs> my number two is Epcot. Um, I totally understand why people feel that Epcot, uh, you know, used to be better and everything like that. But first of all, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is one of the coolest attractions on the planet, in my opinion. The technology in that ride is mind-blowing. The way they literally have you going sideways when you're going sideways. The music, I mean, I've gone on it three times now, and it's blown me away all three times. I've gotten I Ran all three times, though, and I don't like that song, so I want to ride it again with a better 80s song. But anyways, that's a separate separate topic. Uh, Also, Beacons uh, now at Epcot has, Mm. like, it to me is one of the things that I hope they never, ever get rid of that because it's so incredibly Mm -hmm. beautiful and having it themed differently for the festivals. The festivals at Epcot really had this park high up on my list. I have so many fond memories of just being at Epcot with friends and family, especially around World Showcase. World Showcase is one of my favorite places to be, just in general. Um, and so I think that's why it's ranked so high for me, whether it's, and I do enjoy, uh, unlike Jesse, I do enjoy drinking around the world. Not going to lie. I don't have a problem, yeah. but I do enjoy it. And I do it with, when I have friends in town and they want to go drink around the world, I'm always game to do that or eat. There's so much good food at Epcot and Via Napoli's is one of my favorite restaurants. Mm-hmm. La Salliere is my favorite place to get a steak at Disney. There's just so much going for that park in my mind that it's hard for me to rank it really any lower than two, maybe three. But there's just too much going on that it's still my favorite Walt Disney World theme park. And and I don't think it's going to change. I mean, I think they're still adding more and more stuff to it. I have high hopes for the Moana attraction, even if it is just a walkthrough. I think it could be kind of beautiful. I do think I hope I mean it'll be pretty. I hope they they have a good centerpiece of that park. I know Kristen is like, I want the old fountain. I just I just yeah. want to throw coins in the old Epcot fountain. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was wow. that was there was a little toot there. I'm sorry. But I just think that look, here's the thing, okay? Let me just say this. I think with all of us, whether it's what I was saying earlier about Hollywood Studios and and Kristen was saying this too when it comes to MGM, or whether it's now Epcot, which Kristen can relate to farther far more than Jesse and I can because we don't remember a lot of the older Epcot, but like yeah. I think we all have to sometimes take our nostalgia glasses off and try to remember that just because something is different and new doesn't mean it's inherently worse. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not, okay? Let's tell it how it is. Electric umbrella, it's cool to go there. Doesn't mean the food was very good, okay? And it definitely yeah, and it smelled pretty bad. And it smelled there. pretty bad. And that carpet was radical and things were a little was things radical. were a little interesting over there. I, I remember walking through Electric Umbrella like the last few times I did when I was like early teens being like, What is this place still doing here? And so like, come on, like let's just Let's just, I, I'm just asking collectively, all three of us, to sometimes, because we're going to be hosting many, many, many more episodes, to sometimes we do, and I try to remind myself of this, we need to sometimes take those nostalgia glasses off and and think That's about hard. maybe some, th- some things, even if we don't like change, are better for this current generation, are better for future generations, and, and you know... That's just, that's a separate rant. But yeah, I, I still think Epcot, for me, is my yeah. top Walt Disney World park. I, I still walk in there. I love the new fountain up at the front. I still walk in there and I still love it. I love the music. Yeah. I love World Showcase. And frankly, the last thing I'm going to say about this is more people need to spend time 
walking around the countries. And I don't mean drinking around the world or eating around the world. I mean, walk into each country and look at the detail and look at the care yeah. and the love they put yeah. into each country. For example, Morocco is really gorgeous. If you walk to the very back of Morocco and you're wandering around and you're like, this place is kind of cool. Or France, I adore France and I love the Remy edition. So just that's that's just my two cents. But anyways, everyone's top I heart. I think it was, not to cut you off, Jared, but I think it was, this is what I tell myself. I think it was Marty Scalar that said, like, it's not a museum. It's going to change. And I always try to tell myself that when I get, like, worked up over some of the mm -hmm. changes. Like, it's not a yeah. museum. It's going to change, and it has to stay relevant. It's just, like, that's like my mantra. When, when they had D23, when they start rolling out the changes, I'm like, it's not a museum. It's not a museum. But it's it's hard, you know, to see some of the things that you loved doing as a child. And, right, Disney sells us that idea, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this, mm -hmm. you're making memories. You're doing this. So then you go and you want to do these things with your kids or with – you know, your husband or your wife. And then it's like, oh yeah, no, that's gone. Well, I'm that's a, different. I'm a huge sports fan, Kristen. So like I grew up in Massachusetts. So to us, Fenway Park is like a church. It's like mm -hmm. for Bostonians, for people who grew up up there, it is that's like funny. a museum. It's, that's what it is to us. So I, yeah. I yeah. still have so much nostalgia and love for that place. But what's so cool about it is my parents' generation does and their generation does because it's the oldest ballpark in the United States. And most of it is still standing pretty much identical to how it was over a hundred years now. So I feel Wild. bad for like, even though I don't like the Yankees because I'm a Red Sox fan, I feel bad for Yankees fans, for example, because their, their ballpark got fully demolished. It created a new Yankees yeah. park. So I just think about that stuff sometimes, and, and it really it really uh, just interests me, I guess. But um, anyways, let's get into uh, our last pick because this podcast is longer than our usual podcast. But <laughs> you know what? I expected this. We also had to introduce, uh, you know, Chris into the party. So, you know, it was, it was inherently going to be a little bit longer. But regardless, uh, yeah, I want to jump into our final uh, top pick. So, Jesse, go right. ahead. Top pick, Magic Kingdom, which you all knew was coming. <laughs> um, yeah, so Magic Kingdom, I grew up with. I am from South Florida, so we drove up three hours and just would go to Magic Kingdom. And I think that's why Epcot didn't rank as high, because that wasn't a park that we went to when we were kids. It was more like, you know, Magic Kingdom, Hollywood, well, MGM at the time, and then Animal Kingdom. But, you know, some of them lost a little bit of their magic for me, and Magic just never lost it. For me, I walk in, I see the castle, and I get emotional. I don't know why. It just happens. I, I assume that's how you feel about Disneyland, Kristen. You just, it's, you have that emotional attachment to it. I have memories with my parents. I have memories with my sister, my best friends. Um, I have memories of me moving to Orlando and going there when I was sad because I didn't have friends in Orlando. And I would just, like, go there and watch the fireworks, and I would, like, cry. And I, I don't know why. But it just, you get so emotional when you have all these attachments to a place. Mm -hmm. And even the detail in Magic Kingdom, I still find something new there every time I'm there. I walk in and I'm like, did that window always have that name on it? Was it a different name? Wait, was this Hidden Mickey always here? Like, I always see something new. And when it comes to the lands, like, I know, Jared, you were saying that the lands are too spread out. Um, you know, it's not as quaint and walkable. But I actually like that they're spread out because I can be like, oh, that pathway is really crowded. I'm going to go the back way or I'm going to go this way first because I know this is less crowded. Mm. Um, I actually like the fact that it is a little more spread out than Disneyland because Disneyland, I did feel like I was so enclosed. I was like, I don't. I can't go anywhere. Where do I go? But again, I didn't know the park like the back of my hand where Magic Kingdom, I know the ins and outs like the back of my hand. I can pretty much get anywhere decently quick in Magic Kingdom, even if, you know, I'm walking 10 miles. Um, so I thoroughly enjoy it. It Again, it's my home park. That Haunted Mansion will always have memories for me. But yes, I prefer the one in Disneyland. Yes, the Pirates in Disneyland is better. But... For me, the nostalgia really won for me when it comes to Magic Kingdom, um, specifically the castle. I mean, the castle has always meant a lot to me. That is my home. Like, I walk in and I'm like, oh my god, that's my house. Like, I I just love it. Um, so for me, Magic Kingdom really does rank high. And when someone comes into town, it's like, oh, what park do you want to go to? I'm like, Magic Kingdom. Because they want to see the castle. Mm. That's the main park. They want to see it. 
yes, character meet and greets are fun. No, they're not like Disneyland where they're out and about. I wish they were. But again, nostalgia just, it, it beat me. I, I couldn't help it. You know, honestly, yeah. Jesse, just so you know, when we release this episode and we look at comments and we look how people react, yeah. I think there's going to be lots of people who are coming to your defense oh, yeah. about Magic Kingdom. And, I think and so frankly, too. after hearing that, I feel bad having it say sixth, you know, and, and you know, yeah. it, it is what it is, but that's the beauty of this. I mean, I feel bad having DCA a six too, but I mean, you had, you had to order them and it yeah, was like, it's, your game. it's, it's, I didn't want to order them in the first place. Like who assigned me this task? Uh, Why did you do this to me? That would be me, but I am sorry Thank you. because I, oh, I, I'm finding it. It was hard. Difficult. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, Kristen, I didn't like it. Go ahead. <laughs> My number one is Disneyland, the original. It has the charm. I think their character meet and greets are superior. I think the food is superior. I think it's cleaner. I think they have more rides packed into that smaller space. I think they. it just has more charm. It has more character. It's the original Walt Disney was there. It still has Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Um, uh-huh. it does. And I love it. Um, so yeah, I just, and again, it's not that I don't love the magic kingdom. I mean, I too have been coming here, you know, that was the only park, you know, when I, well, no, I think Epcot was open when I started to come here. Yes, it was. But yeah. like, I, you know, used to just go to those two. So I have so many memories there too. I just think like if I'm holding up the original Disneyland park and magic kingdom, I think Disneyland does a better job of doing what the magic kingdom does. And that's not to say that I don't love it. Cause I do. And I still get emotional, you know, when I see the fireworks sometimes or when the parade comes down and, you know, like, and I get to do that stuff now with my kids. It's just, I think Disneyland does a better job of doing it. And I, I just, yeah, I love it. I love, yeah. like I said, the walkability of Disneyland. I love how the hotels are on property, like are so close there. Um, you know, I love the Blue Bayou. I just like, I love, I love New Orleans Square. I just, I love all that stuff. And it's just, I love it. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah. And that's another one for Magic Kingdom too, is the monorail with the walkability and connecting all the resorts, which yeah. is always so cool. So they have a lot of similarities and with Disneyland, like, it's really cool, but it's like magic and Hollywood, like mm -hmm. shoved into one park. So it's hard to be like, oh, this one's better. Well, yeah, but it's diff. It, it's two parks in one. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So it it was hard. Yeah, I yeah I I feel I personally uh, put Disneyland number one as well. And the interesting thing is, I went there on my first trip last year, and you guys were talking about how these are the parks that you guys grew up with, but that's like, I, I didn't grow up with Disneyland and it's my favorite. Right. So yeah. I think it's interesting that I'm coming in with that sort of different mindset, but frankly, you know, and this isn't a bad thing doing what I do for a living, but one of the things I've noticed about doing what I do for a living and covering the, covering the parks nonstop, it's not that I've lost my love for the parks cause that's not true, but I have lost a little bit of the old nostalgia for it. Like I have lost, it's hard for me to associate certain parts with certain memories and certain things as I walk around when I've gone here now hundreds of times. It's just a different yeah. type of, you know, thing. And granted, mm -hmm. wouldn't trade it for the world. I love what I do. But either way, that's just fascinating to me. But I do have a little bit of nostalgia with Disneyland because I've only been there once. So maybe that's why it went to one. But uh, I mean, I went to it several times in a three day span. But yeah. Uh, I went there with my wife. She grew up and loved Disney even more than I did. And, you know, there's photos of her on Main Street at three, four years old, uh, you know, with her little chubby cheeks and her mom, like, hugging her on Main Street. And, and so she grew up just always wanting to go to Disneyland. And so the two of us getting to go out there together, um, you know, being engaged yeah. at the time and hadn't gotten married quite yet, but experiencing it all for the first time together was I think extra cool and I just I frankly I loved everything about that park I walked in and I found myself like being like this is weird because I am on Main Street still uh and the Emporium looks significantly different and everything oh, looks yeah. significantly different but you know Jolly Street Bakery love that way way more than Jolly uh, Holiday yeah Jolly that Holiday, rather 
Love Jolly right. Holiday Bakery. And then I sat there yeah, and had one of the best amazing. cinnamon rolls of my life and looked at the castle and I was like, okay, okay. And uh, my uh, wife had one of those raspberry macaroons there that is just mm -hmm. like the most ridiculous thing I've ever eaten. It's delicious. Amazing. And so I just started walking around and being like, this is so cool. Like it, it felt like I was almost in a time machine because everything it had been like described to me as in terms of this quaint little magical separate world, the original vision that Walt had was exactly the way it was. Like I was walking yeah. around being like, holy crap, this is smaller and maybe not as well made or, or as new as some of the stuff they do at Magic Kingdom. But I love that about it. Like I was walking through Fantasyland and the way it's like, just in a circle with all the attractions in that little circle. I was like walking around like yeah. being like, I feel like I'm in an actual little fantasy village right now. Like, you know, like, yeah. so I, frankly, the, the part I liked the least about outside of there is galaxy's edge. And I'm the biggest star Wars fan you'll, you'll ever meet. So it's like, that was weird yeah. to me because I was like, I should love this, but no, I don't want to be in here for that long. I want to go back and see everything else. Like, so <laughs> yeah, I, I walked in was like, Okay, yeah, I've seen, seen this. this. Yeah. I'm gonna... I felt like, yeah, you know, yeah. I've seen that enough times. I want to go see the things I haven't seen a lot yeah. of times. And yeah. right. even if I went back a hundred times, I'd probably do the same thing because like, oh, yeah. I just... Yeah, we have it here. Yeah, I mean, we've we've seen it. We have it and it's a carbon copy and I want to see the stuff that's new or different. And so, yeah. so, yeah, I just, I feel like it has this perfect level of charm, but also such an incredible array of attractions too i mean indiana jones is one of my favorite rides ever now after doing that i i grew up with the indiana jones movies to the point where like i always grew up watching that with my dad and my dad's side of the family so going on that ride was like super cool and i don't know i could talk about this forever but i'm not gonna bore everybody but yeah disneyland's probably my number one but this was quite the episode because i feel like all three yeah. of us had different opinions and yeah. And a lot of our listeners will have very different opinions, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And we're all still children. friends. We're all still friends, even after the yeah. And we're all still friends. That's what's amazing <laughs> about it, is we're still friends. But, you know. <laughs> but yeah, do you guys have any, like, final thoughts on your list? Anything maybe you're already reconsidering or anything like that? I, I mean, I'm still, I, DCA, I mean, because I, I loved it. So like I, I of course I'm reconsidering it, but like yeah, something has to be on the bottom. Like you know, I don't I have the heart to them. put. I know that's the thing. I don't have the heart to put Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios at the bottom. <laughs> that's why it was it was so hard. Well, yeah, no, that's the takeaway is that this is just a very difficult exercise, and I would love to hear all, the comments though. Yeah, I yeah, everyone and I else's. Love, I love all of them. Like I put Magic Kingdom at the bottom, but I love it. Like I, I, I love, love it. That. And talking about it now makes me just want to go there. So it's mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, you know, yeah. I we'll mean, make a trip. that's. I think that's the takeaway I took from this is that this is not easy. Uh, and I feel bad for making this our episode topic. So <laughs> apologies to both of you. Uh, and right. frankly, frankly, what's, what's amazing is we're spending this time and showing, spending this time realizing that how difficult it was and how difficult it is to put something at six when Jesse had it at one, you know, like it's, it's all subjective. And that to me yeah, is yeah. what makes the Disney park so great is there is something for everybody and not just something for everybody in terms of different fandoms you're into but something for different ages and that's the whole mission the entire point of what walt wanted he wanted things for a six-year-old or a 99 year old and he wanted everybody to feel like a child no matter what age you are and that's that's the yeah. whole point of these parks so it, it was a fun episode and uh we're just so happy to have kristen now a part of the podcast yeah. full time get excited the next few weeks we got some very special episodes coming your way with great guests lined up so be excited about that every single friday we drop a new episode of the mickey bog podcast on almost all platforms so you can check us out on apple spotify amazon and if you want to watch us check us out on youtube we're also available to listen on multiple other platforms those are just a few that i wanted to list real quick oh yeah but if you're fans of the podcast definitely give us a good rating um we really appreciate it i was saying this on one of the recent episodes but 
I was going through some of the Apple, uh, you know, rating ratings, like five star ratings, reviews. which reviews rather. We have uh, twenty reviews, and all twenty are five stars. So thank you for that. But I was reading some of them about how you know you listen with your daughter every week, or it, like it means a lot. It really does. It makes it more rewarding doing this, you know. So just if you feel like leaving a review and making me cry at one in the morning, feel free. Uh, but but definitely, obviously, subscribe if you haven't to this podcast on whatever platform you're watching or listening to it. And um, as always, check us out everywhere else. Obviously, check us out on the blog. We're posting stories constantly, constant constantly. source of all Disney news from all over the globe. And um, beyond that, follow us on social media. As I mentioned, we just hit 10,000 on Instagram. Very excited about that. So yes. Thank you all so much for your support. And here's to next week's episode. Hope you guys have a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.